Well, we have our guest, Yuan Beniz, rejoining us to break this down. So, Yuan, tell us a little bit about what happened here, who these boys are, and why it's caused such a ruckus. So the two boys are um, seeking uh, refugee status in Belgium, as you mentioned. And what happened is that on Shabbat, uh, you know, during, you know, resting time, a time where Jews unwind with their families and go to the synagogue, they decided it was smart and interesting to try and rose to Twitter fame, I guess, by doing this stunt where they not only harassed and intimidated Jews in the streets, they also pointed out to cameras and security um, uh, measures that were put in place around places of worship, which is not only dumb, but also and intimidating, but also dangerous for us. So tell us a little bit about the response of people on the street. How did this play out? So most people stayed really very calm uh, and um, just uh, ignored them. But it was, you, you can see in the videos that some people were very, very um, uncomfortable and not knowing what would be happening, which is the definition of a uh, person who feels intimidated. Um, they also skated, you know, around uh, military personnel, and everybody agrees that you know there's no question that this was harassment. In fact, they were um, indeed detained and questioned by the police, and also uh, uh, warned by the police mm -hmm. about their action. Well, we're in the age of social media where everyone's trying to get famous right now. How much of this do you think could just be chalked up to these, you know, twins, these young guys wanting to go viral? You know, when do videos like these cross the line from being just obnoxious boys to actually dangerous? I don't really care about that line. I care about the Jewish community. And I am sick and tired of uh, excuses and intentions. I'm not here to sound to question the intentions or um, look at whether they have uh, they were ill-intentioned or not. I'm here to try and defend the Jewish community in Belgium. And what I can see is that if you look at the victims, those people who are harassed, those people who are intimidated, they don't think about the intentions of people. Right, they're, right. they're scared. So and tell us nowhere. Yeah. Well, I want you to tell us a little bit about relations right now between Belgium's Jewish and Muslim communities. So it depends on what uh, on which topic, really. I mean, we have a good cooperation on the issue of Shrita, which, as you know, has been um, outlawed in two regions in Belgium. And we're fighting together to try and oppose that, which is a very good precedent. At the same time, uh, there is no denying that in some portions of the Muslim communities, here in Belgium, there is some form of a, um, you know, kind of a, a, a no man's land where you mm -hmm. know there's not a lot of exchanges. So, in fact, on the interreligious side, it works really well. Um, at the civil society level, however, there is some form of uh, distrust that we're trying to um, to to try and overcome. Right. Um, uh, notably, with with good contacts with, for example, the Moroccan community. Um, and, and, and that's what we're doing. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. That was Johan Benizri, the president of the Belgian Federation of Jewish Organizations.